Lonesome Dove, The Outlaw Years. In a lawless land of thieves and cutthroats, one woman is rising to meet the challenge. Maddie Shaw, Lonesome Dove, The Outlaw Years. Sunday nights at 9 on Channel 26, The U. Here's a not-so-fun fact, Vince. And what is that, your lariness? A rollover happens every 10 minutes. Well, how long have we been driving? 9 minutes and 58. Could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. Oh, this job is wearing very thin. Good morning, I'm Audrey Schimpf with the latest business report. The University of Michigan's preliminary index of consumer sentiment for November stood at 90.7. That's compared with 90.2 in the final October index. The current conditions component was 104.3 in the preliminary November report, slightly down from the October version. In contrast, the expectations index climbed just over a point. Administration officials are preparing for a government shutdown. If a stopgap measure is not enacted before Tuesday, many federal government operations would come to a halt. Hundreds of thousands of federal employees would be out of work. Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan is warning against failing to make timely payment of principal and interest on U.S. Treasury securities. He declares it would put a cloud over our securities that would not dissipate for many years. Let the inquiry begin. Attorneys working on Time Warner's planned acquisition of Turner Broadcasting Systems say that the major players are gearing up for a federal probe of the deal. The Federal Trade Commission is expected to seek more information this week from Time Warner, Turner, and TCI to make sure that the merger does not stifle competition. IBM has notified about 1,200 employees that they will no longer have a job with the company. This step is part of a broader cost-cutting action that the computer company announced last month. It said then it would take a charge of about $800 million in the fourth quarter for restructuring. It's the first cut since IBM last year completed a monstrous downsizing. Well, GTE is expecting a big loss in the fourth quarter. GTE says it is taking a one-time charge of $4.6 billion for accelerating depreciation of phone equipment. Analysts say the move should help prepare GTE to take on a slew of new local phone rifles. Ameritech has been ordered to refund $28 million to its small business customers from an April rate increase on in-state calls beyond 15 miles. Businesses with fewer than 12 lines will receive the refunds as a one-time credit on their December phone bills with the Illinois Commerce Commission. Small businesses represent 95% of Ameritech's business customers in the state. A lawsuit claims that Cook County Treasurer Edward Rosewell illegally holds on to the money the people inherit. The suit says that he routinely and consistently denies thousands of heirs the money deposited with his office and the interest that it earns. State law entrusts the treasurer with the responsibility of holding money for heirs who cannot be found for seven years. After that, the money becomes the state's. Today is a federal and state holiday to observe Veterans Day, which officially occurs tomorrow. So federal, state, and most county offices will be closed today. Mail, though, will be delivered today, but not tomorrow. That's our latest look at business news. Kurt Renz will be along to tell us about some of the stocks making news when we come back. I'm Richard Ney. When you see a pullback, don't panic. Use it as a buying opportunity. Stocks I recommended last January, when prices were down, are now up 42.4%. To help you in the market, I'm offering a three-month trial to the Ney Report for only $35. To order it, call 1-800-444-2044. Get my new recommendations as soon as possible. Finally, a way to surround your home with a real sense of security. All it takes is one call to Ameritech Security Link. You see, 
now the company you've always trusted for phone service is bringing that same reliability to home security. Can you believe six more homes will fall victim to a crime all in the few seconds it takes to watch this commercial? To get a home security analysis, call this number. And if you make that call right now, you'll also get $100 off installation. Face it, things like this just don't cut it anymore. It's time to protect yourself with Ameritech Security Link, the sure sign of a secure home. Ameritech, your link to better communication. George Brown here. Just want you to know about the cut rates at Brown & Company, the deep discount broker. Who do those other guys think they're kidding? At Brown, you'll pay up to 86% less than you pay Schwab, Fidelity, or Quicken Riley. $29 per order, but only if you have the experience it takes to trade with us. Call for our free information kit, and we'll see how sharp you are. Brown & Company, Chicago's really deep discount broker. Hello again, I'm Kurt Renz. We're going to take a look at a few stocks in the news today. The first couple of local companies doing well today, and the very first one, a world beater in recent weeks. This one's really been humping from Naperville. Spyglass said it will license its worldwide web technology to a joint venture between Knight Ritter and Landmark Communications. The terms of the agreement were not disclosed. The joint venture company, Infinet, will offer Spyglass Mosaic Web servers to help newspapers establish a presence on the World Wide Web. Spyglass up a big 8 and 5 eighths to 92 and 1 8. From Skokie, U.S. Robotics reported earnings of 75 cents per share for the recent quarter versus 14 cents a year ago. The company reported sales and profits for its uh, fourth quarter, said it expects demand for its data communication products and systems to remain brisk. U.S. Robotics up a nice six dollars to 105 and a quarter. Then moving to New York, Conondegua Wine reported a diluted earnings per share of 52 cents compared to 53 cents for the similar quarter one year ago, and these were lower than expected profits for the company, higher than expected promotional costs were the problem, and this one getting clobbered among several doing poorly today. This one losing about one third there, Canandaigua wine down 16 and 7 eighths. Uh, moving out to Durango, Colorado, Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory said it expects earnings for the third quarter, which end November 30th, to fall in the range of 19 cents to 21 cents a share compared to 18 cents a year ago. Rocky Mountain Chocolate losing about 20 percent, down three and three eighths. And one more here, DSP Group said it believes the company's licensing revenues in the fourth quarter will be substantially left less than in the third quarter of 1995. DSP Group was cut by Oppenheimer to market performer from an outperformer and cut by Cowan to a hole from a buy. DSP Group losing more than a third down five and three-eighths at nine and seven-eighths. I think that's the biggest percentage loser. It's a close contest, so we'll dub this one the disaster du jour. And that's a look at a few stocks in the news. I'm Kurt Renz. Stay tuned. Ask an Expert is next. This is The Business Bookshelf, a presentation of the investment information offered to you by the financial advisors who appear on The Stock Market Observer. Ray Lewis, Vice President of Principal Financial Securities, is offering Channel 26 viewers a pamphlet explaining preferred stocks, paying 8 to 8.5%. Eight These preferreds are offered at $25 per share with no commission added to the offer price. To receive this offering, call 800-982-5458. Technology, health care, bank stocks, utilities. There is consolidation going on in all these areas. Are you in a position to benefit? If not, the Bakovich team will provide you with specific suggestions and a free portfolio review. Call 312-441-3469. Illinois Power is coming soon. Principal Financial Securities is offering a free prospectus on this new preferred. Expected to yield 8 to 8 and a quarter percent, a non-callable for five years. Also for Rob Rackison's five favorite growth stocks and ten happiness stocks, call 312-553-3618. John Kaminsky and John Riley, both of Dane Bosworth Incorporated, announced a series of free seminars titled Effective Tax Planning and Year-End Selling, held in conjunction with a certified public accountant. The seminars will be held on Tuesday, December 5th and 12th, and Thursday, December 7th, all at 5 in the afternoon in the company's office in the Northwestern Train Station Building, 500 West Madison, Suite 3000. Seating is limited. Call Cater Cindy at 312-559-3000.
Arnold Cernick of Dean Witters specializes in retirement accounts. To help you, he'll meet with you in his suburban office, a downtown Chicago office, or in your home. For an appointment, call 708-831-7906. After 28 years of experience helping his clients outperform current markets and indices, Randall Shackner invites you to call to discuss your portfolio and to receive invitations to his seminars. Uh, Tuesday, December 5th at 6 p.m., Randall's free seminar will explain 14% federal income tax credits. For details, call 312-526-2144. Ralph Russell, first vice president at Payne Weber, is offering Channel 23 and 26 viewers information on Payne Weber Analyst Best Idea List, number two, preferred stock recommendations, and three, stocks with potential holiday gains in store. For free information, call 708-572-4002. And stay tuned to the Stock Market Observer for more educational and informational offerings on the business bookshelf. The following program is sponsored by Prudential Securities. Ask an expert time. Steve Esposito here from Prudential Securities, and we are taking your general investment questions right now. Steve gets lots of calls on this program, so call early if you would like to get your question on the air. The number you need here in the studio, 312-705-2666. And uh, Steve, of course, Senior Vice President, the Deerfield Office at Prudential Securities, and he believes that the current volatility in the market signals increased risk. Uh, you as an investor should not ignore the warning signs. True investors should focus on those companies that the insiders are buying and ignore the story stocks. History has proven most stories turn out to be fairy tales with investors left holding the bag. If you would like to talk to Steve about his ideas, about your money, your future, your portfolio, give him a call. His telephone number is easy, 708-405-7359, 708-405-7359. And, uh, Steve, the stories seem to be uh, getting read by a lot of people these days, and people seem to like them. Right. Well, the institutional investors are dominating the market. It's obvious. When you see volatility of up 9, down 8, up 7, in individual investors don't do that. Um, you have very thinly traded stocks. A lot of these Internet stocks have very small floats, 5 or 10 million shares. It's nothing for a Fidelity to go out and buy a million shares of a Netscape. It's $100 million. When you have $50 billion in business and, and assets, what does it do? It? So you can, you can move stock prices up very easily, especially institutional investors uh, in this arena. Uh, but you've talked about, you talk about speculative excesses. I mean, you can't get any more speculative excesses than the Internet. But I think a lot of people aren't realizing in that group, and I, I wouldn't say a lot of people, I think a lot of individuals realize it. I think the institutional investors really don't care. Uh, is A, competition will come in that's inevitable. Any business that makes a lot of money, what's wonderful about technology, is technology helps displace somebody else who was, who was a technology of yesterday. But what will happen is there will be more players in the game and the margins will be squeezed. A lot of these companies have yet to make any real money. Mm. If you back out the interest income on a lot, of the, a lot of the earnings that these Internet companies are reporting are interest income on money they got from investors. Uh, it's really not. They're very aggressive in a lot of their accounting procedures, which has been written in every journal. But let's face it, that's the favor of the institutions, and they're going to keep making it go up, and people keep jumping on the bandwagon until they can't jump anymore. I remember... Uh, when uh, surgical instruments, throw away surgical instruments a few years back were the, the thing because of Medicaid. Medicare was so expensive and this new company called U.S. Surgical had invented throwaway type products and it was for one-fifth the cost and you could do outpatient surgery and everybody who's ever had surgery understands you don't have to go into et cetera, et cetera. Stock went to $132. It's what, 24 right now? Right. So reality will set in at some point. I just don't know when. I don't think anybody does. So uh, just be careful with that group. But the warning signs are there. You can't ignore them. Uh, that's a fact. And uh, you will see some, some reality will set in at some point. I just don't know when. All right. Uh, where do you think this market is headed? I mean, we've uh, uh, had record-setting pace mm -hmm. last week, Monday. Again, you had many of the pros writing the high techs off, and we saw the correction, and now they've mm -hmm. come roaring back as the week right. progresses. Uh, one, of the big, one of the big factors hitting this market right now, or may, that may hit the market, is the fact that we may have a default in this country. That'd be and interesting. There's a lot of concern about that it. That would be interesting if you it know, occurred. Think of what happens to Mexico if we default. Yeah. I mean, they're, we're basically what they're relying on, and if we can't make it, they're going to be in big trouble. Well, it's interesting. The politicians created this problem and in terms of the deficit being up to $5 trillion, and they'll continue to create problems. I mean, I saw a special on Medicaid the other night on one of those Dateline shows, and we're losing $46 million a day to fraud, and the Congress doesn't want to go out and spend any money to hire people to audit these people. I look at it this way, you take $100 million to buy, you buy a lot of auditors for $100 million, and that's two days worth of fraud you can eliminate. But, and they refuse to change the bill allowing competitive bidding versus the VA. So the Congress creates the problems, and they continue to throw fuel on the fire under the 
under the guise of we're fighting against the other guy. I think they need to get their act together, and uh, I hope some point in our lifetime they do. I doubt it. I really do. I don't think they'll ever get their act together. Something's going to have to happen very negative for the act to get uh, brought to the surface. Just like, you know, you don't put up a stop sign until after somebody gets killed. You don't change warning signals on a railroad crossing until somebody gets killed. And it's a shame, but that's what's going to end up happening. But you're seeing some interest coming into broader stock now. Some of the retailers are starting to actually bounce here. Uh, some of the other areas of the market are starting to get some interest. And that's healthy for the overall market. Just what I think will happen is some leadership will simply change. And while the book to bill is, is given another spark to the semiconductors, some of the things coming out of some of the companies is, pretty, is, is warning about this demand, this inevitable demand that's never going to end. Mm. Uh, all of a sudden, there's getting some cancellations. People are ignoring that Cyrus got some cancellations, they said. Uh, Maxim said they've seen for the first time in quarters uh, their order type situation, inflow versus outflow. These are companies saying it. So either you want to believe the book to bill or you want to believe what the companies are saying. Motorola and Nokia continue to warn about future numbers. Microsoft is somewhat warned about the future, but for some reason, people choose to ignore what the companies are saying and rather focus on what the book to bill said. And uh, I'll go with the companies, and I'll go the, the companies. Their actions, Steve, are also verifying their statements. Their insider selling is verifying what they are saying. I prefer to buy stocks where the insiders, the companies are saying one thing, the analysts are saying one thing, and the insider trading is confirming that. Mm. What I don't like to see is a conflict between insider trading and comments coming out of insiders. All right, let's get to questions. A number of them coming in. Uh, if you would like to add yours for Steve Esposito, 312-705-2666. First question has to do with Michael's stores. You've talked about the stock a lot on the uh, air. It was up big yesterday, up again today. I think uh, it, is it coming alive? I think it'll, I think it'll continue to. Again, uh, that's an example of where, if you look at the analyst estimates, if they're accurate or if they're remotely close, the stock's cheap by, based on next year's estimate. And what's confirming the analyst estimates, in my opinion, is the uh, president of the company, the chairman, what have you, purchasing 400,000 additional shares of stock. To me, he's saying that he believes what the analysts are saying. Or he progressively lower levels. Right. Well, he paid price. 30 on 100,000 shares. He already owns 1.7 million to begin with. Wrote it all the way down, bought some at 30, bought some at 17. 300,000 at 17 was his last purchase, and it's around 17 now. So I think he's making, it's interesting, he's purchased more stock in, in Michael's stores than any three of the major software players combined, total purchases. So. Again, actions and words, uh, to me, are the confirming situation. Remember, I think it was Andrew Carnegie who said, as I grow older, I pay less attention to what men say. I just watch what they do. And here's a pretty successful man when it comes to investing. And uh, I'll, I'll follow him, and I'll follow Peter Lynch before I'll follow the uh, spy glasses of the world. <laughs> Boeing, Seattle-based Boeing. Out of favor stock for the longest time. It's now way into favor. The airline industry seems to be getting its act together. However, Boeing, I think, is fairly priced. I think our analyst has a buy on the stock. We don't follow Michael Storrs, by the way. That's my own opinion. Boeing, I think our analyst has a buy last time I looked. I personally feel the stock is fairly valued. I don't think I would be buying it up here, uh, primarily because the P multiple is high in relation to its earnings forecast. Uh, but if the airline industry continues to do well, so should Boeing. Oxford Health Plans hit in the early part of the week. It's been coming back as the week has gone on. Yeah, last week we had the question. The stock was around 81. I basically said I would sell it before you got off the show. And uh, I didn't know the earnings, what was going to happen, happen. If I would have, I would have made a lot of money. Yeah. Stock plummeted 13 in one day, took back another four, and then it seems to be getting a technical bounce up here. You and I were talking about the stock before the show. Uh, the insiders continue to sell stock, large quantities in the 50s and 70s. Uh, they've warned about fourth quarter numbers. You're not entitled to a 60 P ratio or 50 or 40 P ratio if you were projecting earnings coming at the low end of the range of the analysts. You better beat estimates and beat them big. Estimates next year are 236. They feel comfortable with those estimates right now. Like anything else, any company can come out in a week or a month or two months and say, you know, maybe those are a little high. Right. Medical expense ratio increase, which is not good. Uh, the chairman was on CNBC the other morning. I watched it. Uh, earnings were very good, but what people fail to realize, the P ratio and the price to book is out of this world. So, and especially in relation to normal valuations, but if you look at the industry group, the average P ratio is around 16 or 17, and Oxford's at around 60. So, you know which one I want. Service merchandise. It's getting a little active here recently, six and a quarter. Uh, stock looks pretty good. Again, P ratio is 10 times estimates and about eight times, or seven or eight times next year's estimate. Low. Low situation, insiders own 8 million shares of stock, so they've got a vested interest. Margins are improving. Uh, maybe the bottom's here for the retail sector. I don't know. The news couldn't get any worse than it is right now. Even a piece in USA Today on Tuesday pointed out this is probably one of the best areas. Uh, I think when you had one of your turnaround people on, it was on CNBC this morning, and he was talking about the retail sector. The news is about as negative as it was for the bank stocks right. four years ago. So it's probably some good bargains. Not all will survive, but those reporting profits probably will, and service merchandise is one of them. 
IBM. Uh, stock's weak again today, last time I looked, before he came in this morning. Uh, they're laying off 1,200 more people. Again, let's review the facts. If, if business is so wonderful and so fantastic, uh, I'm looking at a situation in which, why are they laying off people? A lot of the earnings, a lot of these companies are coming from cost cutting, not from revenues or increased business so much as they are from cost cutting. And remember, the people they're laying off are also consumers. And at some point, that's going to come to a head. You can't keep laying off people and expect them to buy your products. So that disturbs me. I don't like the tape action in IBM at all. I, I hate the fact that a lot of their key people have been leaving, going to other places, and defecting. Um, the CFO leaving was, I think, a major blow to IBM. Uh, I think I know what the analyst says on it, to be honest with you. I'm not familiar with what the analyst says on it, but I think it here it's best to hold. Uh, one of the stocks that has been all over the place this week, Micron, and a question about Intel as well, which has also been volatile mm -hmm. this week. As we said, those based on PE multiples, Micron and Intel are probably the cheapest stocks on the, on the technology sector. Texas. I mean, projected earnings on Micron and Intel are fantastic. What are they going to do? I don't know. Um, the stocks, Intel is acting much better than Micron, I'll tell you that. Micron is just acting very, very sick on a technical basis. It's just not acting right. That disturbs me, meaning maybe there's something out there we don't know. Uh, Intel, on the other hand, is just based on estimates is one of the better ones. If I'm going to own two of them, they're probably those two stock. I'd much rather have an Intel or a Micron on the books than have a, a Spyglass on the books. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes Spyglass a long time to get up to what Micron and Intel are earning if everything goes perfect. Uh, so, again, if those are the two you're going to own, I feel more comfortable owning those than some of these other companies. Elger Industries. Stock doubled yesterday. Uh, I think it was four and three eighths. They halted trading. Stock opened around seven, closed at around eight. Wow. Stocks were on eight and a half. What was the news? Uh, the news was, they, as we always talked on the show, that what was overhanging the stock was this lawsuit under one of their divisions. They were spending two to three million dollars a quarter on legal fees. It looks to me like the preliminary settlement, and it's tentative. They haven't done it yet. But Elger's going to come out smelling like a rose on this one. Uh, they're supposed to pay, I think, three million in cash, twenty million dollar note over ten years with no with no interest on the money, which means basically two million a year and 17% uh, equity in the company. Uh, that's a heck of a deal. They was worried that they were going to be bankrupted because of this. Just the legal fees alone being dismissed, they save money. The $2 million a year on the note right. is uh, one-fourth or one-fifth what they're paying in legal fees to begin with. The stock obviously is reacting accordingly. Uh, the company's margins can improve dramatically. Housing seems to be picking up. I think the Fed will lower short-term rates next year. And if that happens, housing will continue to pick up, and Elger should do well. So I'm holding positions for the most part. Some clients have taken profit, <coughs> bought the stock in the $5 area. They just want to take the money and run. And uh, depending on where you are, you can take some profits here. I'm not going to tell you not to because the deal is tentative. The deal is tentative. Um, but I, I guess some people have taken, some haven't. So I have to say the stock right here is a hold. I wouldn't necessarily run out and buy it here. Color is 58 years of age, 60000 to reinvest in an IRA in the next two weeks. Any ideas? What was the age again? 58. Uh, in an IRA to reinvest, I would actually look towards blue chip type stocks. Uh, I think parts of the market are overpriced. It's really difficult for me to say the market is overvalued because sectors of the market are incredibly undervalued. Other sectors of the market have passed Mars and are on the way to Pluto. And so that part of the market I wouldn't touch. But if you're 60 years old, I would look towards um, probably putting half the money in a good blue chip equity fund, one that has very little tech exposure, uh, primarily financial services areas. Uh, diversified among a portfolio, just not a sector fund per se. I would try to avoid some sector funds right now. And maybe the other half, looking towards some high-yield income. There's some good corporate bond funds out there, uh, corporate bonds in general paying 9%, 9.5%. Maybe split the money between the two. Have the ability to switch within the family, though, so if you want to change your investment alternatives, you can at no cost. The Gap, one of the big retailers. Uh, the Gap, you know, has reported better than expected numbers. So the stock's even done better than I thought they would do. Uh, I would, uh, I think Gap's fairly priced. I'd look at Buckles here. Uh, Buckles is a similar yeah, type yeah, product. Question. Oh, do we? All right. Well, the earnings came in yesterday. They're better than expected. They had a 50 cent quarter on Buckles for the quarter. Again, Prudential doesn't follow that company. It's a small company. 76% of the stock is closely held. I think it's a better value. It's only trading at 12 times next year's estimate. They beat estimates. One of the few retailers that can say that. Same store sales were up 8.6% last month. Insiders own three out of four shares of stock. Um, low PE ratio, low price to book. Pick a number. Pick a, a reason. One thing, nobody follows Buckles to speak of. There's no real analyst coverage, and that's why the stock's not doing anything. But the numbers were fantastic, and they've been written up recently, again, for the third or fourth year in a row as one of the top small growth companies in the country. Is that right? Yet again, it's, it's out of favor. It's not an industry that anybody cares about, but you're paying 18 and a half or 12 times next year's estimate. They'll probably beat that. IGT, a whole other sector here. Gaming? Again, you know, the spy glasses of the world were the riverboats of the world, or the biotechs of the world, or the invasive surgeries of the world. History has proven time and time again, without exception, 
avoid the hot stocks, buy the stocks out of favor. IGT was hot at 35 to 40, nobody wants it down at 13. I believe gambling is going to stay. I think a lot of communities are going to need it for tax revenue. And I think people like the entertainment. IGT is going to be in the forefront. Um, is, it a, is, for low, is it for somebody who has a faint of heart? Of course not. But IGT has had a little bounce here. Earnings were pretty good. They're very profitable. They're not losing any money. But they're not growing, and in the, in the, in the potential for them in terms of the view of many institutional investors is not as rapid as it could be in some of the other stocks. But it's a good value down here. It's not overpriced. It's trading for, what, 20, 30 cents on the dollar from where its high is? It can easily go back up to the mid-20s and still be way off its high. So that's a stock that, again, I think is a good value in a diversified portfolio. Maytag, you've talked about it before. Yeah, we bought some stock at 15, 16. It just hit 19, 20 on the stock. Again, that's related to the economy. If we get some pickup, some more pickup in housing, Maytag should do well. But the consumer simply isn't buying that much right now. They're, they're leveraged up to their eyeballs in debt. Um, a lot of the players in various industries, from the appliance sector to the uh, housing sector to the retail sector, are going to are going to fold. The flip side of that is the strong will survive, and Maytag will probably be one of those that will survive the negative situation, like the banks. The weak folded, Citicorp got down to $9, look where it is today. The strong will survive, Maytag will be one of those that survives. The next cycle that is economically positive, where the consumer eventually does come back, unless people are going to stop washing their clothes, unless they're going <laughs> to stop buying refrigerators, unless they're going to stop putting clothes on their back and, and linen on their beds, at some point that will turn around, and when it does, the strong will survive and they will explode in value and Maytag's probably one of the ones you want to hold. Okay, tough question, but a fair one. Why do you keep fighting the tape with the tech stocks? I'm not fighting the tape. A lot of tech stocks are going to hit. Cyrus was fighting the tape at $61. It's now $30. Uh, Indigo was fighting the tape. Buying that would have said, well, why fight the tape? It's gone from 10 to 61. It's now 12 again. So it's not a question of fighting the tape. If you, if you argue the, the fact fighting the tape, you would have been a big buyer of all the biotechs at the peak. If you want to argue why fight the tape on the... Uh, on the riverboat stocks, you would have been buying President's Riverboat Casinos at 30. It's now three or four. Uh, we can go down. To, fighting the tape is one thing. It's another thing when you get ludicrous and you're out there paying 50 and 100 and centuries worth of earnings for a company. Fighting the tape is all relative term. Yes, don't fight the tape, providing the valuations and the fundamentals back up what you're doing. One thing I will say on the tech stock, and we can, we can almost, almost leave on that note, there's one group of people that is fighting the tape more than anybody, more than me, more than anybody on the street. And that's the people who run these companies. The people who run the tech stocks selling. are selling hand <laughs> over fist. And I do mean hand over fist. I will show you in any given day the printouts of the insider selling at fractions of today's prices. So the one group that's been fighting the tape the most are the guys who run the companies. Now, again, we have two choices. If you want to sit next to somebody in a chair who's running a company saying, Steve, buy my stock, it's wonderful, I'm 100 times earnings, but I don't care. In the meantime, he gets off the show and goes out and calls his broker and sells a stock. How would you feel if you knew that? How would you feel if you know the stock you own, the insiders are selling? Remember, in Peter Lynch's book, and he's still the best, I'd like to see how he'd do in this market, though. It'd be an interesting situation to see how Peter would do in this market. We haven't heard too much from him, but... That's interesting, yeah. Uh, it's interesting how he would do in this market. If you look at one of his chapters, if you believe in his method, which is the best, and Warren Buffett as well, they have chapters that talk about stocks to avoid. Just pick up the book, one up on Wall Street, read that chapter, and I think that'll pretty much sum it all up for you. Okay, we've got to run. You'll be back in a week? A uh, week two or two. Weeks. I week forget two. which it is. All right. Thank you. Okay. Steve Esposito, Senior Vice President, Deerfield Office of Prudential Security. Steve believes that the current volatility in the market signals increased risk. Uh, investors should not ignore the warning signs. True investors should focus on those companies the insiders are buying and ignore the story stocks. History has proven that uh, most stories turn out to be fairy tales with investors left holding the bag. If you would like to talk to Steve directly, call him. His telephone number is 708-405-7359. Again, uh, Steve's number is 708-405-7359. That's Ask an Expert. Thank you for tuning in. News coming up on Channel 26 and 23. The preceding program has been sponsored by Prudential Securities. Tune in to Joe Battaglia every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday for the Goldline Morning Report at 11.13 a.m. This report is a comprehensive review of trends and activities in today's precious metal and rare coin markets. Joe can also be heard on his nationally syndicated radio talk show. For more information and a free investor's kit, call Goldline International at 1-800-827-4653. That's 1-800-827-4653. When I had cancer, it was as though my life had been suspended, and we decided as a family to deal with it actively. I was able to participate in decision-making regarding my treatment. For me, the emotional and spiritual support were very helpful. 
I'm so glad that I found Cancer Treatment Centers of America. We can help. Call 1-800-515-9608. Chicago's deep discount broker is Levitt and Levitt, a division of Recom Securities Incorporated. Compare brokerage commissions, Levitt and Levitt has lower rates. $35 flat commission on a 500 share trade, $60 commission on a 2,000 share trade, and just $100 commission on a 5,000 share trade. All securities and client accounts are protected for up to $24.5 million beyond SIPC protection. Call Levitt and Levitt, 312-263-8500. Member NASD and SIPC, minimum commission $35. This is the Stock Market Observer on Channel 26 and WFBT Broadcast Channel 23. Good morning. I'm Jack Taylor with the latest news. The White House is blasting a GOP spending proposal aimed at keeping the government afloat. They say it is too restrictive. White House Chief of Staff Leon Panetta is calling the GOP moves irresponsible, and President Clinton is continuing to threaten to veto the bill. More Americans apparently like the job President Clinton is doing. A new USA Today CNN poll shows the president's approval rating is climbing while support for the GOP budget plan is slipping. And if the presidential election were held today, the poll shows Mr. Clinton would receive 53% of the vote compared to GOP frontrunner Bob Dole's 49%. 